Oh, yes, party peoples. Movies. Oh, yeah. What's going on? How's everybody doing today? Thank you all so much for joining us for this uh, episode of Brass Reel tonight or live stream tonight, whatever it is. It's just a trailer breakdown of um, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming out on Netflix 2022. So, man, what do you guys think about this? <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you guys think about this thing? Are y'all excited? I know I am. And also, I wanted to say one more thing. Welcome to Brass Real Tonight. What do you guys think about that? That's huh? pretty crazy. That's a little uh, extra sound effect thing I got going on. I'm just trying to tamper with some stuff, have some fun, mess around. So anytime I, I want to do some sound effect, I'll get that set up better. But it's got like a deep berry white thing on there. And it's really, it's really cool. So anyways... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 coming out on Netflix. I don't like part of me is really excited about this because the trailer doesn't look too bad. But the other part is just like, man, why are y'all releasing this on Netflix? This is if think about this. This is the first one out of all the main icon slashers that's going to be not in theaters and straight to a streaming service. So that alone, I'm just like, I don't know. It feels like it drops it down in priority to me. It feels like it drops it down in importance. Like those guys, it'd be the equivalent of Batman going straight to a streaming platform. <laughs> now I know they did that with, <clears throat> excuse me, got something as always, as soon as I get started, something's in my throat. I mean, they did that with Matrix and Suicide Squad and things like that. But those were during the start of a pandemic, which is now an endemic. So I understand why they did those things. They were just taking drastic measures. They didn't know what the world was going to look like. Now we have a little bit better of an idea. And I just feel like this is, I don't think, I don't know if it's a mistake to release it straight to Netflix or not, but because I honestly don't understand exactly I'm, and again, I'm not saying that I don't understand, like it doesn't make sense. I actually have not done the research to comprehend and fully grasp how these streaming services make money individually for films. You know what I mean? Like, obviously I understand. <laughs> Excuse me. That was just killing me. Obviously I understand that you have the streaming services that we all pay for. And so that monthly fee goes to the company, but. I'm not exactly sure how the individual films or projects make money or do they just buy it flat out, you know, and, and that's something I could probably do a little bit of research on. And I know that there are certain things like properties, they'll just buy flat out. But then on top of that, they'll still keep spending money to develop more stuff like they have bought seasons of things before, like from NBC that they got canceled. Things like Lucifer, they bought that that got canceled and they started making more series of it. Um, and I, I just think that, I don't know, just, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how they make the money individually, but on top of it, I do think that it sort of, I don't want to say desecrates the, the legacy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because look, the Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has arguably been the least continuity filled in the franchises, if that makes sense. So let me explain myself a little better. Friday the 13th, they somehow or another tried to kind of pick up the story from where the left one left off, where the last one left off. They tried to continue and create this long-term lore that where you can watch them all and they they refer to the, the past events and the next film and things like that. Halloween, they kind of did that. They they lost their way after part two a little bit with part three, but then they jumped back on board a little bit with four, five, and six. And then uh, that one's again a little wacky in continuity. Uh Nightmare on Elm Street sticks to some continuity. It tries to like continue all the movies. Like all these things happened in the same world prior. All these events really happened in the movies from part one to part six. And then part seven, it starts to kind of do its own thing by making that, you know, new nightmare film. But anyways, I'm getting distracted. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, however, never really had any full on continuity at all because the first film, which is arguably the best movie out of them all. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of created the slasher craze. It wasn't the first slasher and neither was black Christmas. Actually, I think psycho is technically the first one, but then 
a lot of people say that peeping tom was the first slasher but it just wasn't in the mainstream in my opinion like psycho was and like black christmas and texas chainsaw massacre oh uh real quick though by the way uh if you guys haven't done so already i'd like you to do this <laughs> So anyways, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. But with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that first one just being a legacy, it's a staple for horror films. Everyone that's a horror geek loves that movie. So let's look at this for a second. We've got the first one. And if, if you go from top to bottom, left to right, that's, that's the order they're in. There's a little picture in the middle here of, of Leatherface. I just thought that'd be fun to put that in the middle. Um, so the original just being a freaking classic. I mean... I've got it. Sorry, hit, hit the wrong thing. I've got it right here in my hand in Blu-ray. And then by, back there, I've got all the other ones. I've got my NECA uh, toy and everything of Leatherface. And anyways, so the first one's phenomenal. Toby Hooper directed it. Uh, it's got Kim Hinkle uh, produced it and they co-wrote it together. And then you got uh, Gunnar Hansen playing Leatherface. Well, as soon as they got to part two, which I love part two part two is awesome it was 10 years later it was in the 80s it was when slashers were starting to already kind of boom a little bit and toby hooper i think was very aware that he couldn't make the original as good or this one as good as the original like he they had begged him to do a sequel for a long time and he kept turning it down he was trying to do other things and it, it was kind of it was like that john carpenter complex it's like i never intended this to be a sequel but after them begging and begging and begging him he finally said all right i'm going to do it but he said, I'm going to do it my way completely. No studio meddling. And he, they spent a lot of money on it. They got Dennis Hopper to be in it. Bill Mosley is Chop Top in it, which is a classic horror movie character. Any horror movie fans out there know Bill Mosley. I mean, he's awesome. He's been in Devil's Rejects, How to Stop Them Course. He's been a lot of other things. But Chop Top is what sort of put him on the map. You know, eat my plate. <laughs> but it was a comedy. It straight up was now it was a horror comedy and it was gruesome and it was graphic and had a lot of gore in it. And it did connect to the first one, but it was so different in tone that there was real no, there was no real continuity. You know what I mean? Like if they would have there again, there are some moments where you're like, Oh my God, look at that. But you're not really like stressed out and scared and going mad like you are by the end of the time by the end of the first movie when you're watching that film you it it literally is like making you almost kind of go crazy in a way you're like oh my god this is just so intense and the second one definitely goes for a different route that goes over the top like the first one did but not in an intensity it goes over the top in comedy goes over the top with gore so much to where it's just like damn look at that but i mean it's just the music is all synthesizers and stuff and it, it, you can tell and it it feels very 80s but because of that and because of the money they spent on it and because toby hooper is very aware of what he's doing he's trying to do what you're seeing on screen it's awesome i love that movie but it's not a scary movie you know what i'm saying it's just like a crazy ride the texas chainsaw massacre and crazy party ride and then part three comes along and part three is the one at the top right here. It's the one that has Leatherface on it. Now, it's called Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, or The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. And you can see all they got the titles going from top to bottom down here on the left. So it was very enjoyable for what it was, but it's got a very 90s feel to it very 90s feel and it's got some greats in it like ken foray it's actually starring vigo mortensen as one of the main guys in it um there's a guy and a girl in it, and they're, they they kind of share the screen most of the time and i love it for what it is but from what i understand it's directed by a guy named jeff burr uh, toby hooper didn't have anything to do with it this time and jeff burr really wanted to pay homage to the original film and make it bring it back to the brutality of the first one and and again, not necessarily make it so gore based, make it more of just intense and make you just really afraid. And that remember, the first movie didn't have a whole lot of blood in it. It didn't show a lot. You never saw people getting their you know chainsawed up or anything, but you did see 
people afraid like crazy. And you did see it got beat over a, a head with a, a maul, like a rubber maul or sledgehammer. That was pretty crazy. Um, but the second one just had a ton of gore, whereas the first one didn't. This one, it kind of does a little bit, but he was saying he wanted to, you know, tone the gore back and take it back to the intensity of the first one. But from what I understand, the, the studio meddled too hard and it just, the end product of part three is just kind of, eh. uh, then you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre four, which is just so ridiculous that it's awesome. It's got Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger in it before they were big. And it took, it, this was released years after their career started booming and finally it just got released, but it, they, it was done early in their careers. And it was just, like I said, it's so ridiculous that it's hilarious. But then you had the remakes come out, the Michael Bay ones, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre beginning. And when I say Michael Bay, he was a producer. He didn't direct them. Uh, his, his Platinum Dooms production company is the ones that did that. That one, though, both of those were excellent, in my opinion. Like, those were actually scary films. Like, I was, the, big, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre beginning might be a little scarier than the one with Jessica Biel. And don't get me wrong, I love the one with Jessica Biel directed by Marcus Nispel. But the second one's just got some really intense moments where it's just like, it's hard to watch. And it's not because it's gory. It's because of what's going on. It's because of how invested you are in these moments. So the reason I'm going over all these real quick, and I am going to get into the trailer breakdown is because I, I'm talking about the continuity and what they're pulling with this new one. So after you had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and then Texas Chainsaw Massacre beginning, you had Texas Chainsaw 3D. And which is what after it was uh, released as Texas Chainsaw 3D in the theater. Once it came out on Blu-ray, it was just called Texas Chainsaw. Now that one, which I actually think it's a bad rap. Personally, I enjoy that one for what it is. Um, I think it's actually kind of scary. I think Leatherface is pretty menacing. There are a couple of parts where it's weird, like where he's running around this fair that's going on. And it, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> I feel like somebody would have got him or shot him or something. Um, but that one takes place right after the first one like it's supposed to slightly ignore all the other movies and i don't know if it's really supposed to ignore all the other movies but it it is taking place right after where the first one picked up uh like there's even like a family element where someone's related and they're actually a, a, a sawyer at heart or a hewitt their their bloodlines from that that bloodline and uh, again they've done that and that's what they're doing with this new one and real quick, they did another one after this, which I think gets a bad rap too, called Leatherface. And it's actually kind of like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie in disguise. Like when you're watching it, you forget that you're watching a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie about half the first half of the film. And then it starts to evolve into one because it's like the origin of Leatherface. So with that being said, this new one that they got coming out is, is doing what they did with Halloween 2018. It's doing exactly what David Gordon Green did and so much to the point where they've got the original actress that played in the first movie, the original older lady. And I'm going to find a picture over here real fast. Um, man, you think about, I already had that pulled up, but well, I've just got so Yeah. So right here, this lady right here is the original girl from the first movie and they're bringing her back because she survived in the first one. And they're literally doing the same thing that they did with 2018 Halloween. Now, I got two complaints about this route of this movie. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to make it a bad movie. It could turn out to be really good. I want it to be good. I'm going to be watching it and reviewing it on Friday. The review might not be out till Saturday, but I'll be, I'll be watching it definitely early as I can on Friday when it comes out. And my whole point is, is that it doesn't seem all that awesome that they're doing this whole going back to the beginning to the original girl and she wants to get revenge because they already did something very cool and different like that with Halloween. Now, people could make the arguments that like, well, people make sequels all the time and they do. No, but I'm talking about this specific formula, the specific tactic, gimmicky thing. They kind of did it with the new Scream movie, but one of the things that they're doing it is calling it scream you know T this is called texas chainsaw massacre the the 2018 halloween which i did have a, this is the one thing i didn't like about the 2018 halloween is that it was called halloween 
like call it something else. Halloween something like it's confusing when you have two movies that are the same title and they're not remakes that they're, they're actually sequels. That's just annoying to me. And I, I don't think I'm the only one that feels that way either. I think that, that you guys can do a little bit better job than just calling this movie, Texas chainsaw massacre. Like need to call it something else in my opinion, because it, it does get confusing. It's not really confusing to me because I'm a nerd and I'm all up into this stuff. But for people that aren't, I think they are like, wait a minute, is this a remake or what is it? It's a sequel, but it's like Halloween, Halloween, what Halloween, which one? And so now, now people really refer to them as the Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2018, even though that's not what their titles are. So now I'm getting on a rant anyway. So the trailer starts out like this. <laughs> we see someone driving from a POV shot and then we see, you know, a shot of that van pulling up and then an aerial shot here. And it looks like it's a police van or an ambulance or something hitting this tractor equipment. Now we see a girl or person's hands get out of there. You assume it's a girl pretty quickly. And then you find out that it is a girl. Now at first I can't tell if they're trying to recreate sort of the ending events of part one, like, the girl does get picked up and get put in the truck at the ending of part one, but they could do something like they did in Halloween 2018, where they filmed some stuff that was supposed to take place in 1978. And they sort of added to the original 1978 story and Halloween. And I said, Halloween 2018, I mean, Halloween kills and Halloween kills, you know, that opening like flashback scene, they added to what you had known about the original story. And I can't tell if they're doing that with this, if they're finishing something out with this or her. And I don't think so right now that I'm looking at it more because I don't think that's the same clothes, but I'd have to, it's a long time since I watched it originally. I might actually put that on tonight on the big screen. Um, <clears throat> but you know what? Now that I think about this, this isn't a, this is something new. This is someone else getting caught new because what she's doing is she's looking out here in the grass. She doesn't see anything. She's looking back again, and then all of a sudden, she's hearing breathing. She looks again. She doesn't hear anything. Then she looks, and then she sees that boo pop up. I mean, that's creepy. Just going back in between these two shots, it's like boom, boom. Oh, and that's definitely a creepy shot. Um, and then it just cuts to this. We cut to see somebody driving in some cars. They're showing the town of Harlow. And it, we're just seeing these clips of these people. Now, this girl right here, I think her and, oh, sorry, that's a bad shot. There we go. This girl right here, I think her and then this girl right here in front are like an item. I think they're going to be a couple. And we'll get to some more shots of them showing up. But it looks like they're they're stopping at these like ghost town areas. It looks like a lot of the movie takes place in this area like that, where there's like rundown buildings it looks like a rundown like basically a rundown town um and like i said these people show up there so like this girl right here on the left she is in my opinion from what i'm seeing it looks like that she's going to be involved with this girl somehow like they're a couple because it does look like that they are with each other a lot it looks like they're talking to each other sort of like a couple um so this scene right here we see all these people that obviously are in this town and I don't know if they stop in this town to check it out. I don't know if they're stopping because they do need gas. Cause there was a little shot of them getting gas right here, but there's like a tour bus showing up like people that are like taking an actual tour or something. And I'm again, curious just to what all of this is like, what's actually going down here, why these people are in this town, why this town is there like this. I mean, obviously it's because, the Sawyers or the Hewitts. I, I always get that mixed up because they were they were one name originally and they changed it. So it's either Hewitts and then they, the Hewitts became the Sawyers or vice versa. I can't ever remember. <laughs> Sawyer is cool just because it's Saw, you know, chain Saw, Sawyer. I just think that's cool. But with this thing moving into town, you got these, obviously everybody's like, all right, what's going on? Everybody's what's going on? Who are these people? You see them getting out of there and you see somebody looking in at all of them from this building upstairs and you hear like some ominous breathing and it's like, a <laughs> so I'm thinking that's obviously Leatherface. Now here's what I'm wondering. 
You do see, and we're going to get to it in a second. You do see an uh, old lady, but I'm wondering if it's just going to be Leatherface, you know? Oh, wrong thing. So again, there's that girl looking at everything. And again, I do really feel like her and her on the left here. Oh, see, that's both of them together. I think that they're like an item. But then you see this one right here. She's like, hey, guys, look at that. And she's pointing. And then we see this. And then when you see the house like that, you hear the classic the classic uh, picture taking flash thing that, you know, you know what I'm talking about if you're a fan. And look, that's the house. I mean, that looks exactly like the original house. I love it. I mean, it definitely looks cool. Um, even up when they're walking in right this with the staircase and everything, it's like, okay, those open those front doors that are big like that. That looks like it totally looks like it. And then looking around at some pictures and as she's looking at these pictures, she sees this old thing right here. And if you look right there, it says orphanage, Harlow orphanage, 1972. And then zoom in closer and you see this old boy in the background and it's like a smashed picture or like the picture frame is smashed the glass right in front of that person's head. So I'm not sure if that's going to be Thomas Hewitt. If that's who's that going to be, is that Leatherface? And, and is it going to be about a bunch of the people or is it just Leatherface still lurking around? And I couldn't tell is this modern day or not. It looks like it could be like, I don't know. I was, no, she said the lady in the beginning says it's 50 years. We're going to, we'll get to that in a second. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Um, but they see this lady as they're look, poking around the house, they see this lady in the background and she's like, Hey, what are y'all doing in here? But I'm in and of course, they, there's this like wheelchair walker thing she's walking with. It looks like she's on oxygen, like right. Oh, there we go. Like right there. Um, and she's talking to him right there like that. Now, I heard that Isla Fisher was supposed to be in this, and I think her name is attached to it. I hope this isn't her in some makeup. I don't like it when they get young people to play old people in makeup. Just get an older person to do it. You know what I'm saying? But. She's telling him, y'all better get out of here and all this stuff. And you don't know what you're doing. Got all these, you know, creepy little shots of everything. You see like some blood prints on there like that. Uh, they show a shot of this. Just like there looks like they're compiling stuff together. Now they show a shot of someone walking above. And I think that that's from the trailer. I remember if you guys remember the teaser trailer, there was a shot of this girl right here. <clears throat> and she was underneath like a, like, underneath the floorboard in like a basement area or something and she was hiding and Leatherface looked like was walking on above her and that's where you see this right here and then he puts the chainsaw down in there it's it's awesome but anyways like always just a shot by shot deal now they're just showing clips of this house this old boy's in the kitchen and he's looking at these pots and pans and when he looks at these pots and pans this is really creepy right here he's looking he's looking right he's looking and then you see, you see, if you look in that pan, you see Leatherface in the pan. And one of the things about the Leatherface mask that I've noticed when you see him in this is it looks like it's going to be much more of a less designed mask and way more like somebody put on someone's face. That's what it looks like in the, these trailers. Because in the other movies, it looks like it was more of like a mask made with skin, but it was like actually made into a mask you know what i mean like a bunch of skin made into a mask which that's cool too that that's scary as well but this literally looks like this dude's like putting on someone's face like it looks like they're going for a little bit more of a gruesome leather face in this one uh and we'll get to those shots here in just a second but as he sees leather face in the the pan or the pot right there and then he turns around and he's like oh smack you know, he knows that something's going down. Now, my one fear about this is, is that we start seeing some stuff that's like, I just don't want him to fill this up with like kills that are homage from the original film. You know, I don't want it to, to be, all right, here we go. Check this out now. Pay homage to that kill. It is cool when they do that in movies, but it just has to be really well done. Like if you're remaking a movie, I, I, I think it's cool to pay homage to a kill, then do it your way. Um, but I don't want this to just be like, all right, let's wait for the shot where he hits him with the hammer. You know, oh, let's wait for the shot where he hangs somebody on the hook. You know, I just don't want it to be that all over again. I want it to be a really original, scary story. And I want Leatherface to just 
organically do frightening things to these people. And I don't want it to just be based on these legendary set pieces that we're all used to. Know what I mean? So anyways, um, this girl's got a great look to her, though. She's obviously looking at something crazy right there. And then she see, it looks like she walks into somebody that's like either been brutally messed up, maybe chainsawed, maybe hooked, maybe hit on the head. And then we get to see her crawling under the, the bed right here and hiding from somebody. And it looks like maybe her friend's in there with her too because she's looking out from under the bed. And then her friend and Leatherface are there. And again, this is in the trailer. It could be different. But man, just it was hard for me to get still shots of Leatherface because it was just like, it was quick shots, you know, it was all quick moving shots, quick frames, but then, Oh boy, hammer to the head. Now, again, I'm not saying I'm going to be mad if they do the hammer to the head stuff in there. I just don't want it to be like them checking it off the list. Every homage kill. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm talking about because obviously he's going to be using a chainsaw like he used in all the other movies. I mean, you got to have that. So the hammer's kind of part of it as well. You would think, if a character likes hitting somebody over the head with a hammer and they like using a chainsaw, you'd think that they'd go back to those things they like to use. So it makes sense for him to still have it. I just, like I said, I just don't want it to be like, Oh, here we go. I'm waiting for the hook moment. Um, and again, she's hiding again from the guy, but then you see him pick up his chainsaw right there. So I'm imagining that she right here. So after he got like, she's watching. All right. She's watching right there from under the bed. You see Leatherface's hand go up like this. And then right there smacks this old boy. And I'm thinking that right here, he's picking up. He, she's like, again, looking. He's picking up the chainsaw. And he's about to just br brutally dissect this dude in front of her. And see, that's the kind of stuff I think is scary. And you don't even have to. I wouldn't even mind if it was a scene where they like didn't really show a bunch of gore. Maybe just sh you kind of see blood kind of going everywhere, but it's just showing her having to watch it. One of the things I liked about in frozen, you can see that in my frozen review. And again, I'm talking about the 2010 movie frozen directed by Adam green. That's a horror film where they get stuck on a ski lift. I'm not talking about Olaf. Um, but that one, there's a scene where a guy gets eaten by some wolves and they're having to watch. And you know, you don't even really see the guy get eaten by wolves. You just, the camera is focusing on those two up on the lift, having to experience that and just listen and watch it basically. And it's that I think makes it scarier. And so I'm hoping that like, when we see this scene right here and she might be watching, Oh boy, just like chop him up. I'm hoping that that's going to be something that is filmed in that manner. So then immediately it shows you this from the, the minds that brought you evil dead and don't breathe. So Fede Alvarez is who they're talking about. He was the guy, the, the writer and director of, or excuse me, the director of evil dead remake writer, director of don't breathe. Both of those were, were produced by Sam Raimi. I'm pretty sure. And Fede Alvarez. And then Fede Alvarez, I think is producing this. So I do like Fede Alvarez. I think he's a good director. I think he's a great horror director. And he obviously loves horror. That's his genre. He's not somebody that like jumps around in other things, at least not yet. He's stuck in the horror genre and it looks like he wants to because he's doing, the, he's helping produce that new Evil Dead Rise movie, the new Evil Dead sequel, which they say it's actually going to be a sequel, not a remake. Um, so we're seeing that, that, that when you see this right here, that's who they're talking about. It's Fede Alvarez. And then we jump to this right here. And this is where they start indicating what's going to be going on with the plot. And this is, this is a shot of her from her back in the day. And she, it's basically, she's talking about telling her story. And I guess that she, the public knows about her story that I'm sure it's, it's like a legacy thing. Now you see obviously a picture of Leatherface on the left there. Um, then it cuts to her by herself. And it looks like somebody's telling her that some, sh some shiz has gone down. Um, and then we cut to this and it says, and the original Texas chainsaw massacre, meaning that it's from the minds of Roger evil dead and don't breathe and the original Texas chainsaw. So I'm thinking that they're talking about like Kim Hinkle or Kit Carson. They have to be, uh, not Kit Carson, KT Carson, excuse me. Um, those are guys that are involved with the original films because Toby Hooper's dead. 
But ha- yeah, so I'm thinking it's probably Kim Hinkle, I would imagine. Um, but now it's just showing a bunch of scenes of her, like right here. And she's getting these calls from people about some, like I said, some stuff going down. And now this is just reminding me of the Jamie Lee Curtis thing in the 2018 Halloween. It's like, oh, look at me. I got to get revenge. And she's talking about 50 years. I've been thinking about these guys. And she's looking at old school, you know, pictures. That's a picture of them in the van from back in the day. And then, look, she's loading up. There's a shotgun there. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be unenjoyable. I'm not saying it's going to be good. But it's hard for me to not feel like they're sort of being like, look what Halloween did. Let's do that. And honestly, (laughs) that's what horror movies did back in 1978 when Halloween, the original one came out, everybody was like, let's make movies like that, including Friday the 13th. I mean, Sean S Cunningham, the director of Friday the 13th will, will straight up admit that. So I just don't want it to feel so on the nose that it's, that it feels trendy. You know what I mean? Like, and and if it does feel that way, that's going to make it feel like a TV movie, you know, a straight to streaming film of some sorts. Whereas, and again, that's, what's kind of got me worried. I'm not saying that it's not going to be good. It could be great. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's going to have a sheen, a, a, a production to it that's that I don't want with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I'd like, I'd like it to be a little grittier. Um, so now you know. Now they're just kind of showing you clips of, of of the rest of the movie. It's it's really hard to put together what's really going down, except that she's trying to get revenge after these these dudes or, or Leatherface, and there's some kids involved, some new kids involved as well. Um, again, see, there's the, the, the person who I think is like the girlfriend of the main girl showing this is, this is the old, you know, and it, I should do this. I'm, I can't believe I haven't done this, but the original character's name, I, 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 this is bad of me for not doing the, uh, the work on this. Okay, Sally. God, I knew it was Sally. And I, I love this movie. I don't know why I was just drawing a blank on that. So anyways, Sally is her name. And it's showing her and all these other kids. And it looks like she's got this like police van of some sort. I don't know. It looks crazy. And that could be the van we're seeing in the beginning. And maybe we're just seeing one of the friends that they that were helping out or something. I don't know. But then this is the tour bus it looks like and this is what i'm really excited about to see what goes down in this tour bus area because it looks like something happens where he gets on the bus and he's like all right i'm, I'm about to get up here with you you guys and look here's a shot of leatherface right there that's what i'm talking about like it looks like he literally like put someone's face on doesn't look like he sewed something together and so like i'm just curious to see if that's going to be super scary like i wanted to oh, yeah, I mean, that looks jacked up, right? That does not look like... I'm not saying that the original Texas, the original Leatherface mask looked, like, cool. But there was a sleek design quality to it. There, You know, it had a design look. Whereas that doesn't look so designed. That just looks like you cut somebody's face and scalp off and just put them on. Or maybe just the face. Who knows? Um, and then, you know... Now it's just showing just a bunch of brutality from this point on in the, in the rest of the trailer. <clears throat> like, so this is another cool shot. So at first I was wondering, like, why is, why are they in this city? But it looks like it's a, in an abandoned city. So that makes a little more sense to me. And this is the, the main shot of the trailer you really got. And it's kind of the cover of the movie they're advertising right now. Uh, that's the thing with Netflix, man. They don't really, since their Netflix releases, they don't focus a ton on like cover art, which I wish they did. It's another thing that, you know, I love about horror films, especially the original ones. The cover art was great, especially the Nightmare on Elm Street ones. Um, and then so that's where you see this, and it's like this tour bus passing by. And I don't know if somebody, you know, again, this is all a compilation of scenes right now, but I don't know if somebody stops and they're like, we need to stop because we saw somebody over there. And then Leatherface just starts going to town. But there he is right there. And it looks like he's just about to, I mean, he's running at him. I love it. Um, and what's great is they do this little kind of gimmicky thing right here. The face of madness. And then they, they basically say returns after that. But after they say the face of madness returns, you see this. And see, that's what I'm saying. He's definitely like just putting on someone's face. It's not just, 
sewed up stuff like it was in the other ones, which again was cool, but this is a little creepy. Another thing I want to mention real quick is that I've talked about before in the past that I don't like killers in the daytime. And I'm talking about like killers in neighborhoods and stuff like that. Like Ghostface, you know, Michael Myers killing in the daytime would be kind of crappy. And he's done it before and it doesn't work well. Like in the in the bad sequels. In the original movies, he never killed in the daytime. But like Ghostface killing in the daytime with that 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 very noticeable mask and costume. I just don't buy it. The reason this stuff works in the daytime is because it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of like the hills have eyes. And to me, that's even scarier. That To make something that's supposed to be sort of like welcoming and relieving like the daytime. Like you're always relieved in horror movies when the daytime comes. Because you're like, as long as it's daytime, nothing bad's going to really happen. And then in hills have eyes or devil's rejects, especially texas chainsaw massacre you don't feel that way you're definitely afraid because they're in the middle of nowhere there's no one to help them there's no no one that would hear them scream um and then now again a lot of this looks like it takes place in this town you know you can see there's an old marquee behind them this is all old girl right there sally she's ready to just bust them up got a shotgun and a cowboy hat again you know Jamie Lee Curtis didn't have the cowboy hat in the first one or in the 2018, but she definitely had the shotgun and guns and a trap house. Uh, Now I'm curious as to see who her character is in the movie. If she's just some sort of random girl or if she's actually going to be significant to who Sally is, or does Sally go and try to rescue her because it's like Sally's granddaughter or something like that could be. They, they don't really give a lot away in this plot. You just know that Sally's going back because she's mad. And she's going to try to kill Leatherface. She says she's been thinking about him for 50 years. This is another reason I think that maybe these two are together in the movie because there's just some, a lot of moments to where it sees them, shows them like close together and like lo- behaving like they're a couple. Here we go. Another shot with her and the shotgun. It's just like she's going to be playing this like seasoned badass kind of like Jamie Lee Curtis was in 2018. And I just don't want it to be too on the nose. However, here in a second, it looks like, oh, that's a nice shot of her looking at Leatherface at the top of the stairs right there. But that's another thing. It looks like this one's taking a stab out of Halloween Kills because Halloween Kills was using this sort of stained glass window thing in the house for, you know, the Myers house and, that's just an imagery we've never seen in a Myers movie before. A Halloween movie is him like standing in front of the stained glass window. It was just really looked awesome. And it looked it to me, this reminds me of that. It looks like they're, they're trying to like, not only let's pull from Halloween 2018, but visually let's pull from Halloween kills. And I know everybody steals from everybody. That's kind of how art works. You steal from artists, but I just, I wouldn't, <clears throat> I'm really excited about this. But I also have that vibe, like I say, with the way you feel about every trailer. Like every trailer, you're either like, man, I can't wait to see how good that is. Or you're like, I hope it's good. And this one, I'm not like, I can't wait to see how good it is. I'm 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 feeling like, I hope it's good. Nothing's indicating to me that it's going to be bad, except for the fact that it's on Netflix, straight to Netflix, and that it's taken that same page out of the the Halloween 2018 book. It's trying to use that same exact formula with the characters. Now, it could be really well done, and, and it could be just inspired by what Halloween 2018 did, and it could be its own thing completely. I don't want to take away from that, and I don't want to act like I know what this movie is before I've seen it, because I haven't seen it yet. I'm just telling you how my expectations are at this point. But nothing makes me happier to get my expectations ruined when movies come out. So I hope that my expectation, I hope it's awesome. Um, Now this is where it starts to look like it's getting good. So we got people. Okay. So yeah, he, this is also too. let me back up. You, you see her at the top, you see Leatherface at the top of these stairs and then he's throwing this hammer at her. Basically you don't see what happens. It just cuts to someone getting pulled away And then we see like handprints on the inside of this bus. It looks like Leatherface right here is swinging his chainsaw around during the broad daylight, which I'm hoping that's like the end of the movie. Like I don't want Leatherface to get killed in this movie. I Leatherface is one of those sort of things. It's like, I don't ever want him to die. I don't mind if you kill some of the other people that are 
you know, responsible, like for example, the, the sheriff and the original movie or the original, excuse me, the, they made him a sheriff in the remake, but you know what I'm talking about? The grandpa kill him, kill all the other people, but like keep Leatherface alive. That's just the way I feel. I don't know why I've just always felt that way. I kind of like the idea of him just still being out there and him being a mindless maniac and he doesn't really go after people. That's the other thing about the Texas Chainsaw Master. They are kind of like the Hills Have Eyes. They're not going after people. You're in their territory when you get when you get messed up by them. That's how it is in all the movies. Every single one of them, the only well, I take that back. In part two, they go and do something, but there's a whole reason you have to see why that happens. But like I said, part two is a comedy. So it's not to be taken seriously at all. The guy gets ridiculous too, man. When Chop Top and Leatherface go up to that radio station. If you guys are fans of the franchise, you know what I'm talking about. But this is where it gets crazy right here. Looks like there's a moment where he's in this tour bus with these people. And it looks like from the inside, it's kind of like a party bus or something. I don't know. But like all these people are looking at him. And yeah, this is where I should have. I don't know what I was thinking earlier when I was like, I wonder when this takes place. Of course, it takes place now because they all pull their phones out right here. They're looking at Leatherface, which, man, guy, he looks so jacked up with that mask on. And he's got the, like, shiny apron. But, yeah, they all whip their phones out and basically tell him, we're going to get you canceled, bro. And, of course, that's not what happens. But I do think it's cool that they're incorporating the whole social media thing that, like, wouldn't everybody see this? Now, here's the deal. I'm wondering what's going to happen with this movie. Is everybody going to see this? Because it's look like he's streaming this. People are commenting on it right there on his phone. And you see Leatherface in the phone. So I'm wondering, is this going to cause a chain reaction of some sort? That's all. Just curious. But then, man, cut back to the Saul just, oh, Saul just, woo, woo, woo. And then look at him lifting old boy up just straight up to the ceiling. I love that. Just. I like the I like the idea of him being a little bit more um, crafty with the saw as far as like I know that the saw is is very heavy and I know that it would be hard to move around but I kind of like the idea of him being just sort of this brute ogre strength and him being able to just manipulate the chainsaw like better than other people would too because he's just strong so I hope that it's kind of like that. But I mean, and right here, it does look like he's just like holding him up on the roof and chainsawing him. Just, oh man, so gratifying. But then it just starts flashing. And I tried my hardest to get some of these scenes right here, pictures of him, but it really just started flashing hardcore. But it was, it was basically showing a massacre happening on this bus. And it is pretty cool to think about like, if nobody had weapons and nobody had any real way to fight back, and you had a maniac on a bus with this chainsaw just chopping you up. I mean, it's kind of like you're screwed, right? It's kind of like, we, let me just wait my turn or just run around until he gets to me. I mean, and it looks like there's blood all over everybody. And that's what that picture was earlier of that, those handprints up against the, uh, the window. It looks, it looked like that they were clamoring to get out. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to find those handprints again, but it's hard to find them anyways. So, to me right there, I mean, that just looks, I'm, I'm ready for a massacre on the bus. I mean, look, blood's everywhere. Oh yeah, here we go. The hand, there's one dude just up against the window, please get us out of here. And it looks like she's just watching from inside the bus. Like, oh my God. And then very last shot you see is old boy just standing right there and he's got the chainsaw. That's another thing I think that's going to work really well, too, is they're not trying to get too crazy with the chainsaw as far as by the time they got to part, I mean, part two was a comedy. By the time they got to part three, the chainsaw was just massive. I mean, it was super huge. And if you look at the chainsaw on this one, it just looks like a normal chainsaw. If you look at the picture on the right right there, it just looks like a normal link chainsaw. So maybe that'll be part of the reason he's able to manipulate it a little better, too. And also, when you look at him in this last shot right here, you see it. It's just like a normal size chainsaw. Still deadly though, right? Man, God, that looks just, whoo. So then right after that, you get this right here, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But I just wish it was called something else. Like, I don't need it to be called Revelations. You know, I don't need it to be called Resurrection. I don't need it to, I just need it to be called 
something else. You know, it just it has to be called something else. Like Texas Chainsaw to me, that worked. I thought that was good. Leatherface, that worked. Um, what if? I mean, you can't just call it Saw. What if they just? <laughs> what if they call it just chain? No, I mean, I get look Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre or or what if they call it Texas Chainsaw something else? Like didn't even use the word massacre because if you have Texas Chainsaw in there, you know what that means, right? You know, if somebody says Texas Chainsaw, it's automatically talking about, oh, it's a horror. You mean the leather face, right? I mean, you associate that immediately. Massacre could be changed up. Maybe they could have done that. But just to call it Texas Chainsaw Massacre again, I mean, now we've got three movies called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So when you're like, oh, do you see Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh, the one from 1974? No. Oh, the remake. I saw. No, the new sequel. Well, I've seen the sequels. No, this one's the new one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wait, it's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You know what I'm saying? It's just stupid the way they're doing that. They need to not do that. But anyways, guys, that's that's all I got for you. I just wanted to uh, roll over that trailer for a little Oh, shit, spilling my coffee everywhere. Just wanted to roll over that trailer a little bit because at the end of the day, I mean, Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre is up there with the greats for me. I love all the movies, even though it's they're the least – continuity filled franchise like the continuity is really bad between those like they don't even try it like when i say don't even try they just make another movie that's about another family and you know what i mean um texas chainsaw did try to bring back some sort of continuity but like part three and part four very little continuity whatsoever um and then you have texas chainsaw massacre the remake and then you have a prequel to that remake which there's continuity between those two but there's never like a long running deal to where it's like five, six, seven movies. You know, at least the screen movies haven't tried to start over. At least the screen movies, as much as I was just kind of eh on the last one, at least that they've kept it going and they've tried to, I just don't need them to start over every time. I don't know. So we'll see how this goes. I really do hope it's good. I want it to be good. Like I said, I love the Texas Chainsaw Fr- franchise mask. <laughs> I love the Texas Chainsaw Mask franchise. Uh, some are better than others, but as, a, as for the most part, I really do love them all. And I just don't want this to be another movie to be another movie to ride that train right now. You know, to, to ride that, let's start from the beginning, connect it just to the first one. I mean, when you start doing that too much and you're calling it the same title. Anyways, I'm going over it. I'm ranting right now. I, I got to stop on that. But hey, guys, I, I do want y'all to check out my uh, my trailer, Lake Court. Uh, it's on my my YouTube channel right here. Definitely check that out because we're really working hard on that right now. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's a little slasher thing we're putting together. And the way I refer to it is Halloween 1978 meets scream 1996. Uh, we're just trying to create some, something within the realm of that style. Cause those are some of my favorite horror films right there. As far as slashers are concerned. Um, so, and also if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button, please hit the like button as well. I got uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, uh, the video, excuse me, the review is going to be coming up for that on Friday. And I'm also going to be working on Scream 3. I'm going to be doing Scream 4 as well. Um, I got a bunch of stuff in the works. I'm doing this stuff all the time, but I'm also trying to get this film made. So I'll be doing live streams also, guys. So just keep your eyes out for everything. But I think my next video, the soonest one I'm going to be having is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix when we're talking about now. So, hey, thank you so much, guys. See y'all soon. And remember, life gives you lemons. Make some hot, fresh popcorns. Mm-hmm.